another week and another episode of the flash what's going on guys that guy right here with another review episode we are in our fifth week episode five obviously for the flash mask of the red death part two i'm very excited to share my review my my thoughts on this episode and we have a full list of things that i've written down uh and areas and points that i really want to touch on in this episode so hopefully you brought the snacks guys and without further ado let's get into it So episode five follows immediately after the events of episode four, obviously, because math, and it follows the Mask of the Red Death part two, which shows, you know, Javisha Leslie's Red Death wreaking havoc on the city once more. Now, we saw at the end of the last episode, uh, which was Mask of the Red Death part one, in which Barry, you know, gets captured and he finds out who, you know, Red Death is and finds out what her motivations are and what she's after, what she's trying to achieve, this and that, and is left with no other opportunity or no other, you know, he's forced to kind of run on this cosmic treadmill that she spent the last three episodes building and acquiring pieces of via her help with the rogues that she's uh, kind of teamed up with. And so in the, the fourth episode, we really see Red Death make true on, on her goal and build this cosmic treadmill, but she can't do it alone because she doesn't have, you know, organic speed that's why she needs barry so barry runs on the treadmill loses most of his speed and you know obviously as these things go just like a battery it needs time to to recharge and so that's really what we see in this episode uh we see barry have to lean on once again the rogues and i gotta be honest guys off the jump the rogues have kind of been carrying this, this season ever since he recruited them back in i want to say what episode two or three we've really seen uh these characters shine in a way that we we never did now when i saw that these characters and we did videos about this where you know these characters were going to be revealed the hotness goldface and uh hartley rathaway i thought that they were just going to be in it for one episode right but they've been a, a big part of this season or specifically the first arc of this season which is the first five episodes them taking on red death and that's really what episode five is it's the culmination of barry you know using the resources that he has around them and you know also with the writers kind of doubling up and and creating new plot points for us to be interested in as we go forward so we're going to get into all that but first yeah just wanted to talk about that give give credit to you know the rogues for really carrying the last couple episodes i didn't think i would like them as much as i have but i've actually come to really enjoy them specifically goldface he is just he is just the perfect amount of comedic humor but he also it, it can be very serious and realistic and i like the balance that 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 actor that character has struck uh with me in the show and so, like I said, this episode sees Red Death continue to take hold of the city with these clones that, that you know, these senti sentinels that she's been able to, to manufacture via the help of a surprise cameo. Now, that surprise cameo is none other than the one and only Gorilla Grodd. Uh, that is something that I wasn't expecting. So I have to, I want to touch on that. I have to give credit to the writers for that. Was not expecting that. Back when we saw the trailer for this season and we see, you know, Barry looking up at someone and saying, you know, I need your help to save the world. I always thought that that was, I had a, a few theories as to who that was. Uh, my my biggest theory was obviously that it was Oliver Queen uh, as the Spectre, and we knew that Oliver was going to be coming back, uh, but maybe he comes back earlier. Maybe this was an opportunity for him to 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 bring Oliver into the show. And yeah, it that was, that was not correct. Uh, you know, it actually turns out to be Gorilla Grodd who he's speaking to, and that was a surprise to me. And I want to mention that because, you know, in the era of the internet is so much has been spoiled for this season or so much has been i should say revealed right that you know i just happen to stumble upon a lot or people just tell me that it takes a lot of the surprise out of the the season you, you know when things happen or at least some of the things that have happened in the first five episodes many of them we've kind of anticipated or known was going to happen so it was really nice to see gorilla grod in and have him appear one last time because he has kind of made a cameo in just about every season for the last couple seasons i should say where he had a featured episode where it really was about him and his his combative relationship with the flash but it looks like gorilla grod is turning a new leaf and decides to help barry allen in his attempt to stop red death and ironically enough plot armor and all he just has a glimpse of of the speed force inside his brain that you know kind of gives us a i guess it illustrates a, a previous encounter that they had 
last season or two seasons ago where you know they they share speed or, or something like that in order to stop a foe that that grod had and so you know I, I think that part was cool a little unrealistic i was like oh you know uh yeah i guess i guess the story kind of connects but i i, I don't know outside of that i think grod's appearance as it, you know in on his own as his own character i think was really strong and I, I really enjoyed having him in the episode as just kind of a piece to the puzzle and not the main entree you know what i mean i i always enjoyed grod but I never liked how they would take an episode and make it all about the character. That's just my personal opinion. But moving on from there, I liked that that he was in this episode and he helped Barry out. And um, yeah, I think that that was really good. You know, I think that 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 moment led to Barry having a confrontation that we've been wanting to see him have, uh, which was him going head to head against Red Death. So fast forwarding through the episode, he gets his abilities, which I like. He gets his speed back. And then he goes and takes the fight to Red Death and actually fights the character, which I think had this had this whole arc going on any longer, I think it really would have started to 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 get old. And and as someone who really enjoys the show, I've been really wanting them to just can can we see some fighting? Can we see these two characters go at it? And that's exactly what we got in this episode. Now the CGI obviously isn't what it used to be. Um, but it was still good. It was still decent. And we get a, a relatively brief fight, but the, the CGI that we get in that moment is pretty cool. And I think they snapped in and, and I was actually pretty hyped when I saw it for the first time. And yeah, we see these two characters fight. And I, you know, I don't know. I read somewhere that Red Death was going to be the main villain of this season. And I still believe that. I still think that Red Death isn't finished. I think this character will make a return uh once more if anything you know towards the the last couple episodes right um because I, I don't know if they have time to bring in a whole new villain maybe it is cobalt blue maybe cobalt blue is the the final villain um but i do think that red death is still going to be a part of this somehow but i do like that they they in the arc in this episode at the end of this episode we do see barry and batwoman makes an appearance you know speaking of cameos we get to see batwoman once more she makes an appearance and she snaps and goes toe to toe with with red death and i thought all of that was cool it was nice to see them they finally beat up on red death uh i do wish that the character was a little bit more likable i do wish that the lines delivered by this character was were a little bit more believable but all in all, I'm just glad that we can kind of put this behind us and maybe move forward with a new conflict and a new villain, you know, as we head to the final episodes of this season. And that's really what I'm hoping for. Um, but I do think that, yeah, I do like that they kind of ended things here. And overall, I, I was I was thoroughly impressed with the episode, guys. I, I think if you if you like my general thoughts on this episode, I was impressed. I thought this episode did a lot of things right. Now, was it perfect? Absolutely not. There were things that that there were plot moments that I felt to be a little corny. Some of the writing was a little cringe at times. Not as cringe as the last two episodes we've seen, but definitely had its moments where I, I felt like, you know, uh, I was questioning uh, certain things. But overall, my general experience with this episode was strong and it was good. And I enjoyed the moments that I was watching. It felt like watching old old school flash days where I was sitting on the edge of my seat, actually in, enticed in the in the episode and the characters and the plot and the action. And all those things really combined well in this episode. So I was happy with that. You know what I mean? I think I was really, I was really pleasantly surprised by this episode. I think the last two episodes have let people down in a little bit of a sense. You know, I think the episodes, uh, the two two last two episodes were good on their own, but they just ended with just some some of the corniest writing that we've ever seen. And we get a little bit of that from Red Death too. I just I don't think the actress was 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 the right fit for such a dark and and kind of tormented character. But again licensing and all that or you know whatever their reasonings for picking this actress to, to do this this role I, I just you know and it's no disrespect to the actress i just don't think it was the right fit you know i i feel like the the, the character of red death should have been zoom levels of, of dark and and should have been just you know i don't know the the, the character itself just the plot and, and the, the motivations of the character really were just very one-dimensional and didn't leave you feeling like there was a lot to be desired you know she just wanted to get back at the flash and and that was really her driving force and that was kind of lame to me <laughs> in my opinion but overall guys i think this episode was really good i like the cameos from grod i really enjoyed that batwoman showed up a little bit i don't know if she's going to be a big part of the rest of the season but it was cool to see her to see her make an appearance in this episode and for them to finally put the red death you know arc behind them and what happens next i have no idea i don't like i don't really know what the rest of this story is going to to unfold we still have eight episodes left and so i think really when it comes down to it i am looking forward to seeing what the rest of this season has this was a strong episode 
this was a really strong episode um at the end of the episode we do see some more character progression and some more story progression that i was really looking forward to i.e chester and allegra i think the moment that they have there they finally stop beating around the bush and and get to the point i think was really good this is stuff that we typically have to wait till the end of the season to get resolution on so it was really nice to feel like this was kind of the end of the first quarter or the first third of the season and then we're going to get a new part and then we'll get the finale so i, I like how they're kind of pacing things out um it really felt like a it almost felt like a series finale or you know a season finale in a way and maybe it was right this was the end of the first quarter or the first third of this season and we're going to move on to a new conflict and new issues and new drama and i'm kind of looking forward to that we also see a goodbye of joe and that had me really emotional joe west i i, I didn't expect him to be leaving at the end of this arc I thought he was going to make his way through the rest of the season. Maybe he'll show up at the final episode. I think it's weird to have a character exit the show, you know, halfway through. But it really does feel like they're trying to squeeze in three seasons um, or maybe three different three different, you know, seasons into one season. Right. I could see that had this show not been ending this season, I definitely could have seen them have this whole Red Death thing be an entire season where maybe they would have had time to really flesh out this character uh, and do more with it. But you know all in all they didn't have that time so maybe the five episodes like this is all we got for this this character and then maybe they'll have five more episodes and then they'll have a final conflict which will you know resolve in the, in the final three episodes that's that's kind of how i'm seeing things play out in my mind um but we'll see how we'll see how, how things shape up in the end um yeah but i was really sad about the whole joe exiting i think that that was really sad i don't know what they're going to do with the rest of this this season now that joe is going to be gone but it is really sad. It's it's our first goodbye to a major character on the show uh, this this final season. So it is a bit of a uh, of a solemn moment. But you know we'll see how things shape up. And outside of that, we get some good news though that you know Nora is on the way since Iris is pregnant. And the whole Iris being pregnant thing is something that I definitely expected them to do, to do. Right? We saw this in the first episode where Barry creates his map book highlighting some of the biggest moments of their lives and we knew that she was going to get pregnant in three months now three months i thought was going to be at the end of the show that they finally announced that she's pregnant and they ride off into the sunset and it's a beautiful ending but it looks like they're they're bringing that in early so the next arc of this the the story is definitely going to be about them you know dealing with her being pregnant and what's going to come with that and that's exciting it is exciting I, I didn't expect that to come soon that was actually a big surprise what i didn't like about that part though was the fact that keon or Kiyun, whatever her name is, was able to, she was able to just say, oh, you're pregnant and, and also revive Mark. So she has some abilities that maybe they're going to tackle in the next few episodes. I have no idea what they're doing with this character though. I do find myself at times just being like confused by why this character is even here when they could have just kept Caitlyn and just had, you know, cause Caitlyn started this show. And so why are they getting rid of this character to bring in a whole new character at the final run? It makes no sense to me, but that's a different topic for a different day. As for this stuff, I did I didn't like that part that she revealed it, but I think that maybe it was just meant to open the door for, you know, us to explore what this new character is going to be and, and how she's going to impact. And maybe she does have some reviving abilities. Maybe she is able to bring back Caitlyn. No clue. I have no clue. But we'll we'll you know we'll definitely be talking about that a little bit more in the next couple of episodes for sure. As I think they're really gonna start to make Kyun. Uh, a prime focal point of this next plot and so other than that stuff guys this was a great episode i really enjoyed it i thought it had a lot to offer was it perfect absolutely not but i think if i had to rank it i'd give it like a solid eight five you know i'd give it like a solid eight five maybe a nine if i watch it again uh, i think it, it the pacing was good the plot was good I mean, there were certain moments that i didn't like i didn't like the the, the whole keon moment didn't like that mark uh continues to you know they keep trying to iterate the idea that Mark is a part of this team, even though personally, I feel like he has no redeemable qualities or value and no contribution to this team outside of Allegra and Chester and, and even Iris, like he, he just doesn't offer anything. So I'm not sure what they're doing with that. And yeah, and the whole red debt thing, but I am glad that it's over. So those, those things I didn't like. So I had to take a couple points off, but for the most part, this was a strong episode and I enjoyed it. If you guys did enjoy it as well, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you did enjoy about this episode. What drew, what drew you to it? Or if there's anything you didn't like, let me know that as well. I'll be looking for your comments in the comment section as always, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be on the lookout for more videos, uh, either on TikTok or any of my socials. Follow me there. If you guys want to stay in touch with me, we have videos dropping all the time, literally every day. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new here. We'd love to have you become a part of our community. And as always, my name is That Guy Rye, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.